Yeah, this is my name. Tabe and Zex. This is my partner, actually. Thanks, Cameron. Yeah. So, like we're talking about, if you see in here, these are the water storage that we used to import from Nigeria. Then by the way, we can produce it ourselves here, and it's all by the grace of the trade between Cameroon and Nigeria. Um, Tabe Tatoyanik, yeah. also known as, popularly known as Oga Plastic. You know, the plastic came up so a couple of years after I started trading between Cameroon and Nigeria and as per the line of business which I'm into, um, generally into plastic products, yeah, finished products and also raw materials, raw materials, yeah, import finished products, but not much, especially mostly many leads, bouchons, uncle bouchon, bouchon, bouteille, different forms. And mostly raw materials, polymers to be precise. They're importing um, water tanks, storage water tanks. What you see on for um, shut on um, water towers. Yeah, that people use in construction houses and all that. Yeah, and by the grace of God, luckily today, now I'm producing my own water tanks in Cameroon, which is it was like a dream. is is like a dream come true. I didn't, I couldn't imagine like within this short period of time we could get to that. But, Should we counting exactly now? It will be 10 years. The count this year will be making it 10 years. But definitely, in every trade, I always have the, I have a concept about life, first of all, that in everything you do, there are a lot of opportunities. It depends on how the, the dynamics which you get into it. And as per the one which I know, which is Nigeria Cameroon, which I've been into for all these years, if I'm into it all this while, it's because they are definitely it's prospering and there are a lot of a lot of things to be done and it is very prosper prospering I think. Whole lot which about to start listing it now we cannot I'm not sure we will get through with all of them. But let me just sideline the main ones which myself have been through and which I think is something that the government really needs to intervene into. Uh, actually this one is something which we cannot be regularized because of the fact that the two countries are so based in two different economic zones. You know, Nigeria is in the ECOWAS, Cameroon is in SEMA. So definitely there are some difficulties, especially when it comes to monetary movements. You cannot just go and get goods there without exchanging uh, currencies. So the monetary movement, yeah, it's a challenge, but I think somehow the guys are going through around it to see how it can be sorted out and more fast and more fast and everything. But most especially, we have expenses that we incur on the roads. Like when you get the goods from Nigeria, coming back to Cameroon, you go there, you buy. Between Nigeria and Cameroon, definitely we pay our duties, export duties like from Nigeria. Me importing from Nigeria mostly. I had, I had export, to, export to Nigeria, I import mostly from Nigeria. So export duties, we have, you pay your export duty normally like any person, like any as it should be done, definitely, at the customs of Nigeria. But you have so many road expenses that you have to incur. It's some sort of like the notion which the guys on the side of the Nigeria, I'm talking about the of, of, um, officials, like the officers on the side of Nigeria and that on the side of Cameroon, they give you the notion as though the trade is illegal. But which is something which is very legal because it is well known by the government and the government itself is very aware of the fact of how much money this trade has impacted Cameroon and the same likewise the way it has impacted Nigeria. So but we face a lot of challenges on that perspective. Money which you spend on the roads in terms of controls. After you have cleared your goods or after you have imported your goods from Nigeria, you pay your duty, export duty, come to Cameroon, you pay your import import duty, custom import duty, and other port charges, but you still spend a lot of money between Tico, yes, if you are coming, if you bring your goods in from Tico. Um, uh, Nimbe or Izinao or, or Ekok, from there coming to the to your final base, which for, for I for one is to out, you we spend a lot of money on arriving. That is one main thing which the government has to look into. Also, the immigration issues that Cameroonians faced while in Nigeria, after they have obtained their entry visas, as is, as is stated by the 
by the policy which you have, you get your visa upon entry up to 90 days. Likewise, for Nigerians too, in Cameroon, it's not just on, it's not just on one side. Because even in Nigeria, I've seen, I've, I've, had, I've had partners for Nigerians, they face the same crisis here. After they've obtained their visas upon arrival, they still spend a lot of money with the immigration controls on the road, the police. Likewise, us, we spend the same money too on the other side. So it makes us feel so uncomfortable. Like, I don't know if it's some sort of screwing us up or, or whatever, but the government needs to see into it that like, people should get aware. But I think, I think people just need more awareness. Like, if <clears throat> we have somewhere to direct our issues to, or they have people where to direct their issues to when they can run, if they face such challenges on the highway, where they can direct it to, and it should be straightened up, I think, with time, we'll eliminate such minor problems, which are also not minor for everyone. Since 2014, since the Ebola outbreak, we have had so many situations which either the Cameroon government blocks it, officially blocks its border between Cameroon and Nigeria, or the Nigerian government blocks its border for trade between Cameroon and Nigeria. It has been difficult for us because we are, that is, for some, for some of us, it is our only source of income. And for many too, we are relying on that. So, there are so many periods which the borders are being blocked. I think like right now, even officially, I don't think the border between Cameroon and Nigeria through Tiko, Limbe, or a couple of now, I don't think it's open officially for for persons, but for goods, yes, it's open. Yeah, and you know, you cannot buy, you cannot buy without you being there. If you don't have a good, if you don't have some good partners who are on the other side, which you can really trust. The government, first of all, have to recognize the positive impact of this trade. They have to recognize it, that this trade between Cameroon and Nigeria, I mean the both countries, they must recognize the fact that it impacts the economy of the country, the, the both countries positively. Because if you don't recognize something, if you don't recognize the positive impact of something, it will not give you grounds for which you actually put it into like you put it as as an objective like to see into it you understand yeah so that's it i think the first thing is the government should first of all recognize it as a positive that's a positive the positive impact on its economy that it brings into it when the government recognizes that then the next thing is the government should go now into details they should put in place they should put in places agencies at each of these given ports of entry of entry which permits to enlighten the traders Enlighten them, not that for them to go through the right way in doing the trade. Likewise, because they are, because even to now, yeah, <clears throat> I think the government is losing more even because you have so many guys who bring in goods into Cameroon or into Nigeria illegally. They don't pay duties, and it's on the advantage of the government actually, and it's because the government doesn't want to recognize the trade. If the government recognizes it, guys will bring in, they'll go in about they'll go about the trade legally. I mean, fully legally. And the government will make money, and the guys too will be comfortable because they will not be going through, they will not be going through situations <coughs> that they face every day. So the government should see in together on how to bring in strategies of implementing agencies that will actually some sort of educate. If there are many guys who are into this trade. I think like more than sixty percent of them. They are most of them. Most of them are illiterate actually. When I say illiterate, it's not like stop illiterate. They are illiterate like they didn't. They are not well educated and everything. So. The government really has to take into into consideration all of those things here to see how they can follow it up. Like you know, I think the only the best advice of the other person is first of all, you should believe in everything you want to do. Everything you want to do. It's very lucrative, that's one thing. Now it depends on how you go about it. Try not to follow the the shorter way. When I say the shorter way, that the easier way. Understand the fact that trading between two countries is just about what you call which you have to maximize the risk. The risk we should take. The fact you're going to some other person's country, you have to give your money to the person, you have to give your money to someone which you don't know. You have to first of all evaluate, like, I should not give my money to the wrong person, first of all. The methods of bringing your goods now into Cameroon. Make sure you follow the right channels. Go through the, the, the recognized, at least the recognized spots. Because if you don't go through them, definitely you face a lot of challenges. 
if you want to try most of it, like they have, they, when it's, they, their sea coast is very large. <laughs> Anybody can bring his boat and and hang up somewhere. Their sea coast is very large. But it's not every sea coast, sea coast that is important. That is that is a recognized spot, right? Port of entry. So the person should make sure the person tries to follow the right channel and the correct thing. And if you come to somewhere, someone tells you, uh, no, uh, I would prefer you to give you give me your money and I'll pass through this method and all. Oh, no, no, follow the recognized channel exactly. I think through that way, the person will avoid a lot of problems and definitely. Yeah, the person will still face some of our challenges, but it will not be risk. It will not be risky of losing everything. Okay, yeah, because people are, there are many guys who are following the right, the wrong channels, and they have lost the small money which maybe they have sold lands in Cameroon to start a trade. <coughs> the next minute is they, they lose all the money, and then they should make sure the person should make sure avoid to trade on contraband goods. You have so many guys who illegally export rice to Nigeria. Illegally import cigarettes or drinks, which it which they have been stated clearly that are contraband, contraband to be imported, or some guys get into drugs and all. They should avoid. You should avoid. You should avoid taking the wrong, the wrong channels. Because at the end of the day, you will do it. It will pay you for some while. But the day you have to lose, you lose everything and maybe get you up into jail.